right, at this time, I will be speaking with uh, the apex regulatory body for the insurance industry. I need to say it like that so that you would understand what I'm talking about. Because when we're talking about the financial industry, it's not just made up of the banks. So I have Olon Dare Sunday Thomas, who is uh, the Commissioner for Insurance as well as the Chief Executive Officer at National Insurance Commission, that's NICOM, N-A-I-C-O-M. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, what a day to be on the program. One mm. year in office. Yeah. One year in office today, 30th, as it were. Mm. Uh, 365 days in office. Mm. How has it been as substantive commissioner? Because yeah. I know you, you yeah. were appointed acting commissioner before the yeah. president uh, substantively appointed you. How has yeah. the last one year been? Well, uh, thank you, Nancy. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, the last one year uh, has been uh, topsy tough, uh, but uh, it's a flow from uh, from the past. Um, largely, insurance uh, industry has remained insurance industry. The commission has remained the commission, but in the last one year, we have uh, tried to uh, change turn things around and seeing how best we can uh, make the difference um, that is required uh, for us. Um, the last one year, we, in terms of stabilizing the industry, we try to stabilize the industry, uh, starting from the commission itself, um, as much as possible, enhance cooperation amongst the stakeholders. By this, I mean the operator, the regulator, and uh, even the insuring public. Um, we've done some constructive engagements. Um, so in the, in the last one year, uh, I, I believe uh, that there are challenges, but we have been trying to live uh, up to solving those challenges uh, as much as possible. Now let's talk about the challenges. What yeah. are those challenges you've tried to solve? Because in the country, a lot of people take a look at insurance as a business for God. Mm to ensure mm. the rest of us. So when they think about insurance, perhaps when they think of it is when they have accidents, yeah. uh, when their cars are crashed, uh, when fire, calamities, will, yes, calamities. Mm. there should even be a funeral insurance. I don't know if we have it. Did we do? we do? <laughs> okay. So when things like that happen, that's when people come into the consciousness that, oh, okay, there should be insurance. So what mm. are some of those challenges apart from penetration, apart from a low awareness of the industry and all of that. I think likely you have started <laughs> from the most... Whether uh, there are more technical <laughs> challenges that well, you the, the, foresee every day. Yeah, but I think uh, the most uh, uh, that I want to speak uh, about here is the awareness. Mm. People getting to know and appreciate the benefits of insurance. Um, just like you said, people don't get to know about insurance until uh, a mishap. Uh, happens, the unexpected happens. That is when to they th want to think. Uh, when there's an accident, the vehicle is stolen, the house got on fire, uh, the, the, the shop is, uh, uh, something happened. So, uh, but that, that's not all about uh, 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 insurance. The insurance essentially, it should be seen as a financial instrument to, that you use to plan for the future. So that when the, the unexpected happens in the future, you are ready for it today. So that, that, that's, that's what it is. But uh, what we are trying, we've been trying to do is to increase the knowledge of insurance and the benefits it provides, uh, both to the, uh, the insuring public um, and all the, um, the stakeholders, let's say. Um, of course, the supply side also, uh, how to strengthen them uh, has been a big challenge. Um, strengthen their capacity um, to be able to uh, provide the services for which they have been licensed to do. Um, we, we are doing a bit of that. Uh, also, uh, there are issues um, trying to get people to comply with the compulsory insurances. Uh, of course, we are aware that some of these uh, covers by law are made mandatory, um, but unfortunately, um, by reason of not appreciating the benefit of insurance, there has been very low uh, compliance level. Uh, those are some of the uh, challenges. Of course, the issue of human capital uh, is also there. Um, uh, of course, insurance is a knowledge-based mm. uh, industry. Um, so we, we also are, are also doing a lot in, that, in those areas. 
Mm, okay, let me take you on some of the things you've said. Let's talk about the low awareness campaign mm. that we've seen. How is NICOM as the regulator trying to empower citizens with more information? Because if you don't know something, yeah. you may not do exactly yeah. what you expected yeah. to do. How is NICOM leading the way with the stakeholders in the sector? I, I always start um, early next, last year, we were set up to engage through interactive um, uh, uh, campaign uh, with the public. Uh, but you will recollect by around March, towards the end of March, the issue of COVID-19 set in. So human contact interaction in that wise was no longer possible. Um, it took a larger part of last year. And, and uh, there are very little we could do because we have come to, to know that um, people appreciate more what they can see, uh, what they can feel, you know, not just what they are hearing or something. Um, so we try to engage the public through the states. Um, and uh, with the difficult environment even last year, um, we still visited one or two uh, state governors uh, trying to, uh, through the machinery of the states, reach out to the people um, so that uh, they will get to know that insurance, one, is not a levy, it's not a tax. Uh, insurance is about providing benefits uh, in, in when uh, the unexpected happens. Uh, those are the things that then, of course, the issue of the enforcement of the compulsory covers uh, that we try to do. In addition, uh, we've been trying to engage the media um, to help us uh, in disseminating uh, some of this information. We've had a few, of course, we have deployed social media uh, as much as possible, uh, but there's still so much to be done in those areas. Um, the print media, we've also trying to reach some category of staff. Uh, sometimes, uh, I think we were in Kano some one or two months ago uh, to speak with some um, small and medium enterprises um, engage them on what value insurance can add to their business. Um, a very large crowd. Um, we did one, another one in Abuja here. So we intend to just go around and continue to spread uh, the, the good news. So how say. do you measure from those crowds to customers? Because um, you can have so many people yeah, come sure, to sure, an sure, event sure. or crowd yeah. and none of them would subscribe to an insurance yeah. product. So how do you transit those, cost, uh, those crowd of people to customers? Yeah, I, can, I will quickly tell you, beyond uh, those uh, uh, visits, uh, in Kano, for example, we were there with some operators, yeah. and immediately, if you see people the number of people that, the number of people that subscribe, they actually went for the preferred uh, Takafu mm. uh, uh, insurance, uh, which, of course, we had Takafu companies mm. that was you know, there with us, so immediately they were picking them up. So uh, and that exactly is what we intend to do uh, around the country um, from time to time. We don't go alone. We invite the operators uh, to, I mean, to stay with us so that it's not a case of go and meet. It's mm. a case of they are here. Yeah, here. So that you know, they can just come around and uh, begin to uh, uh, pick them up. You talked about uh, earlier visits to some state governors, I think, two months ago. The mm. question also is around Nigeria's insurance sector being somehow a government-led private business. Do you mm. think <laughs> that the Nigerian insurance industry has been able uh, to, you know, be cut off from government caprices, so to speak? Because you even see some stakeholders in the insurance sector are being perhaps a bit partially owned by state governments mm. and all of that. So how do you, you know, take a look at this? Well, for, for me, uh, insurance is, uh, in terms of operators, it's by private. In terms of those for whom benefits are to be provided, it's both government and private. And for those who are to create the enabling environment, is purely and largely the government. Mm. Now, um, I mean, looking at it from this dimension in it, in these three different areas, of course, uh, the, the, we, the, we, I call it the supply side. Mm. The okay. private sector, which is the underwriters they, uh, and the brokers, uh, they provide the services needed. Um, so the product must be right. They must be able to make these products uh, affordable and available. That's one. The government and the private sector must help 
as much as possible to, uh, to disseminate the information. And the government must provide the right environment uh, for people to be able to uh, uh, key in. Of course, you know that uh, uh, um, the, the economy, the performance of the economy, and of, co of course the insurance sector, uh, they move in the same direction largely. Um, mm -hmm. In which case, um, uh, when the environment is, uh, is very right, uh, tendency for people to quickly um, pick up insurance is, is, is quite high um, because they will try to see that they have enough you know, to, uh, um, to buy into insurance. But I will also want to say quickly that uh, even in times of scarcity, uh, that's even when, again, that's when people also should think more of insurance because whatever asset that you have acquired now, you don't know how, when next you'll be able to acquire it. So you must preserve what you have right now. You've been able to save over time to build a house. Shouldn't you preserve that house? I mean, at times uh, you just sit down, you're watching the TV, the rains are coming. A company, so a company with storms. Mm. I, don't, I don't want to go to flood. flood. I, I'm still talking of storm. Roofs will be blown off. Mm. Thunder now, can just look thunder can strike. And scatter things in your house. What provision have we made for those? And when they mm. come, they don't know the difference between A and B. They just go ahead and strike. So, both from the government side and the individual side, have we made adequate provision for this? And this is the time when we should run and seek our insurance companies, seek out the insurance companies and make provision so that rather than calling government to help, you have already made provision. There is a financial sector that is equipped to provide these benefits. Then the same thing, the government should also provide, I mean schools, hospitals, they are also within the framework apart from the fact that it is compulsory by law. Because it's not just that the, institute, the, the building can be destroyed, it can take it to destroy another person's property. That is what we call third party liability, I mean that's a liability to another, to another party entirely. And you take responsibility for it, but that can also be insured. So these are some of the things that insurance has provided, but people seem not to quite uh, uh, understand. Is it because it's a, it's a technical area? Is it that technical? <laughs> or is it because Nigeria is such a peculiar, I don't know why, yeah. no, Nigeria is I, not peculiar. I, I would say largely because of the level of financial illiteracy. Okay. Largely. Which shows like mine are trying to bridge. Yeah, it's, it's um, no, because in, in some advanced countries, um, the, the people, the ordinary people, I call the ordinary people, mm. they understand li because insurance is like oxygen to them. They breathe it, they, you know, the, you can't, there are certain things you can't even, you can't go near without insurance. You can't think of having a car without insurance. You can't think of having a building without insurance. You can't even think it. So people get to know about some of these things. Even you can't go to some shops to buy things. Insurance is attached. That is why people in, in this side, we haven't really, you know, really gotten used to insurance being part of our daily living. What are the compulsory insurance? Well, the one people know so much is the issue of uh, third, party third party insurance insur for motor vehicles. Um, that it's um, just to cover you. And there are people who used to make the mistake that it's just for the law enforcement uh, agent to let to me pass. You, yes. yeah, but that is not true. It's to ensure you against your liability to another party. For example, you had you hit the uh, uh, government polls. You've, I mean, I'm sure you must have seen mm -hmm. one where you must take responsibility for it. It's not a case of just, you know, the tendency is that people will try to save the life and uh, hey, the vehicle is destroyed, but nobody thinks about the poll. The poll is taxpayers' money. After you have been treated and everything, you are supposed to come back and pay for it. We do, that doesn't happen in this country. But I'm sure it, we come to a point where our government will start to hold people responsible. Now, if you have that kind of a third party, it will cover the, your, your cost, the cost of replacing that pool. I, I just want to make it as simple mm, as, as that. that. Then you hit another vehicle, that is just one of it. Of course, building under construction. If uh, uh, you have a building that is more than two floors under construction, you're supposed to provide the necessary cover, so in case, in the course of erection, 
um, something happens, you have seen collapse, building collapse, and people are killed. People are maimed. Nearby properties are destroyed. The, the, the building under insurance of building under construction is supposed to provide for compensation for the, the cost of or your liability to those who are affected as a result of that. You also have public building. And that is even the most widespread, if not much more than that of vehicle. But people don't get to know about it. And what do we mean by public building? We are talking of any building where public have a free access in its simplicity. We talk of hospitals, we are talking of hotels, markets, schools, private and public schools. All those ones are that are supposed to have an insurance cover. Mm. And, okay. as, as, and mm. again, the one that emanated from the Pension Reform Act is the group life. Mm. If you employ more than three people, you're supposed to have a cover for them. Your driver, your security man, your housemaid, that's three. You're supposed to provide the group life for them. Because if anything happens, it's not going to be a case of, hey, she was very good, or the security man was a good person, so um, uh, let's see what we can mobilize. No, it's, a real, it's an entitlement. You're supposed to, and he, is, he or she is supposed to know that my employer has made this provision for me. So if anything happens, my relations, this is what they get. Mm. So those are some of the things mm. that uh, have been uh, provided. Of course, we have the uh, professional indemnity for medical uh, and health workers. Uh, uh, those ones are, all, are also there. And the insurance of import. Uh, when you import, you're supposed to provide insurance cover for that. Um, so with all this, the insurance industry is supposed to be making money. Of course, of course. And the insurance industry's cousin or competitors, <laughs> where the banks <laughs> make more money than the insurance industry. Yeah. I hope we'll be able to talk about that in a bit. But let's yeah. go over to government business because there was a time, I think some years ago, that it was said that many government assets are not insured or they don't, government don't even pay the supposed insurance on, where are we on those now? Yeah, yeah I, I think, uh, first of all, let's dimension it in, in this manner. Um, of course, we understand largely, when you look at uh, group life, let me pick group life, for example. The federal government have, done, have been trying in recent times um, to provide the needed uh, cover for its employees, uh, largely. Uh, at least I'm aware of that. Um, and we're engaging the government with respect to uh, the other assets. Um, some likely are covered. I mean, what do you mean, I, government? Who are you engaging with? I'm talking of the federal government. Government, now. okay. Yeah. Through, I'm, through where? Is it through the Minister of Finance or through? It's through the Minister of Finance, right. largely. Okay. Um, Katanginan's office. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for respect of the group life, it's through the head of service uh, of the federation. And they've been doing a lot in, in, in that wise. Um, um, but for, for the other assets, um, some of the uh, institutions uh, that are probably not funded directly by the government from the Treasury, also they, they, they provide their, their insurances. I mean, I tell you, Nikon, for example, is a government agency. We have all our assurances. Don't ask me why, why, <laughs> why should we be doing that. <laughs> yeah, but we, I, I'm just saying this, that uh, um, most of the government agencies um, have, of course, it shouldn't be a case of most, it should be all. Uh, so, but es okay. essentially, we are driving that and uh, we are engaging institutions as much as possible. But the most worrisome is the state. Mm -hmm. That's the most worrisome. Uh, take, take group life, for example. Um, from the statistics that I have, I think probably only five states uh, have a group life cover for their staff. Uh, and that, that's of 36. That's, that's not a good one. So it's not just that's even it. about staff. It's not a matter of it, it should be insurance for personnel, yes. for pro properties, and even projects or infrastructure exactly. that is being done. That, exactly. That, yeah. So, so uh, I'm thinking, I'm talking, I mean, the most uh, important uh, uh, asset that an employer can have is the human, human asset. Human capital. The yes, human, human capital. Assets, so yeah. uh, that we should be, be, we believe should be given a priority in, in our expenditure structure. Mm. Okay, let's go, uh, since, because you're painting insurance in such a very good picture, and mm. 
I'm liking that somehow, especially for those that are watching, yeah. so that they, they can understand how the insurance industry works. Yeah. But from what I've gathered from you, it seems that the insurance sector is such a good sector mm. that provides good products, mm -hmm. but they are not being marketed in a very good way, or yeah. perhaps we are not being served in a very good way as you're putting mm. it. Why mm. is it so? Because these are good products, seemingly yeah. good products. Yeah. So why is it marketed poorly or why are we not being served well? Even for those that have insurance already, when they go into trouble, when they have some of these mishaps, to get their claims are difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I will tell you, um, and I'm going to properly dimension it. Now, if you look at it from the supply side, are uh, the products readily made available? Yes. Are they well distributed? Probably to a large extent, uh, but probably not deep enough. Because as I speak right now, there are still some sections of the country where insurance is like is strange. People are not uh, don't even know that it exists. So that has to do with our distribution structure. Uh, but with the re with respect to the demand side, that's what we call short short termism, in which case people. Uh, 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 don't want to invest anything longer than they can immediately get. Mm. So that has been responsible. You know that if you put your money in the bank, you can go tomorrow and withdraw the money. If you buy shares, you can dispose it of the, the following day. day. But insurance is not like that. Insurance is in a case, I mean, for example, how do you imagine you, ha you have been insuring your vehicle for the last two years and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So why you, should I There's the tendency for you to think that why mm -hmm. should I continue? Mm -hmm. that but I've had stories. I've had stories of people who did that. The very year when they think that uh, they want to be smart by not paying the premium was when something happened. So it's, but you see, insurance by its very nature is a pool. We create a pool from everyone for the benefit of those who will be unfortunate to have a mishap. And that is why when you compare the premium to the liabilities of the underwriters, it's so wide apart. I mean, how do you imagine? And I mean, I've had situations where people engage me and ask me, uh, what do you mean? Uh, I, I will pay only 5% of a vehicle. I bought a vehicle for 10 million. And you are telling me that uh, if I pay 5% of that, if anything happens to the vehicle, you will take, pay me 10 million. Where do you get the money? But it is because this is a pool. And those who have mishap will be given the opportunity to benefit from the pool. So how do you, how do you address the issue of trust? Because trust yes. is seemingly on the line. In uh, the I, I was just to get mm. there. Yes, of course, we are not unaware of the issue of trust. Um, the issue of trust is that uh, people don't believe that uh, if anything happens, uh, they, will, uh, they will get the benefit. But I will tell you, largely, if you do a survey, most of those who say that have never had anything to do with insurance. Mm. So it's, it's based on perception. But at times, perception can be very strong. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and say it doesn't Thanks. happen. Of course, we have issues with those uh, not paying claims promptly with few companies which we are addressing again we have a structure that had made provision for that people have allowed to report to the commission if they have issues that's a structure and it is a statutory it's not a benevolent by the commission it is a statutory ma a, a requirement that we attend to such a structure has been built whereby when you report your claim at no cost we have a responsibility to resolve that and the Nigerian Insurance Association also have a, uh, a structure mm. that tend to, as a result of self-regulation, if you report any of their members to their complaints bureau, they have a responsibility to address it. So all those ones are there at no cost to the insuring public. Let, let, let's talk about the big elephant in the room, mm. uh, the recapitalization. Mm. You know, the last recapitalization was done in... 2007? 2007, yeah. That's a long time ago. That's mm. how many years now? 14 years ago. Yeah. I remember I was in Lagos then. Yeah. I had started uh, yeah. doing a business program then, and we, we all talked about the recapitalization mm. then. How come it's taking so long? And I know it's such a sticky issue now, but I will still want your comments on it. Well, I, I Nancy, I, I would rather that um, 
we don't discuss this now. There are issues with uh, recapitalization, but I believe that those issues will soon be uh, resolved. Uh, but what is important is that uh, we need to strengthen the operators to be able to be alive to their responsibilities. Um, I'm sure we are still going to have an engagement once those issues are resolved. Then we'll be able to uh, let you know uh, uh, where we are on that. Let's talk about the micro-insurance market because well. Uh, what exactly is microinsurance for those that are watching and <laughs> want that explanation yeah. from you? Even as you talk about microinsurance, I would also want you to talk about the TACAFO, which yeah, you mentioned right. earlier, which is the non-interest component That's or right. perhaps Islamic yeah. uh, insurance. Let Ethical me put that business, in. They yes. Call it. yes. Yeah, I, I think largely we were talking about financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, that is financial inclusion from the perspective of the insurance sector. Um, micro insurance, uh, you have micro enterprise, you have micro business. What does micro mean? Small. Uh, uh, those, uh, you know, most of the time, the, 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 the populace, they think insurance is, belongs to the elites. Mm, but that is not quite true. But at the same time, insurance is uh, available for everyone. Uh, but what we have had with the conventional insurance is to take care of the upper, uh, uh, upper part of the pyramid. Those at the lower end uh, seems to be neglected. And that is what the gap that microinsurance is around to fill. Um, for microinsurance, uh, we have uh, been looking at this very seriously in the last uh, one year. Uh, one of the things that we have done largely is to open a window for the conventional companies to also uh, begin to uh, operate micro insurance. I think you did that uh, last year. Yeah. Oh, 2019. Yeah. 20, no, last year. Last year. Yeah, yes. last year. Um, to so we have opened up the micro so that you can open a department that is known to us. We understand the structure and continue to, instead of setting a separate capital for it, also side by side, we also so have. Instead of setting like a micro insurance, insurance company. company. Yes. Like you have micro finance banks. Exactly. For those that are existing now, insurance com companies, they have a micro-insurance They have a micro-insurance department, department okay. uh, that we function in mm. the same manner. Of mm. course, they already have the culture, and they don't need to set a separate capital, but they, of course, part of the capital will be fact when we are doing the analysis of the capital cover um, for their risks. We also factor that that department exists. They will operate side by side with standalone micro-insurance companies. And we have had... Uh, we've registered so far, I think, about four or five micro-insurance companies, um, and they are, they, are, they, are, they, they are operating. And one of them um, will soon be competing with the, low, uh, with the lower end of the conventional. Uh, it's doing excellently well, uh, and that's quite exciting. Uh, we, are, we are ready to do more. And, of course, I would say part of the financial inclusion is the TACAFU. Um, we have also have registered about four TACAFU insurance companies, two long before now, and two in the last uh, one year. Has, has it been reviewed? Because I know since when you... Yeah, uh, yes, we, we, we did a, a little bit of review, not substantial. Okay. Because um, industry players were calling for a review, a comprehensive yeah. review of TACAFU. We, we, we've done that. Okay. We've done that. Um, and in fact, the review is, is continuous. There are some aspects of it that we are still looking at. Um, but largely, we have shifted from the conditions that license the first two. Uh, these last two that were just licensed and authorized to operate, um, they are under the new uh, uh, conditions which we have done. So, and uh, they, they, they are doing their bit. Um, I believe that um, uh, uh, probably next uh, engagement, I'll be able to give you numbers in terms of how they have contributed uh, to the port. How, how, how should gross premium grow? What are the efforts to grow gross premium? Because I know, I think in 2020, about 530 billion uh, in, yeah. gross, in gross premium. That was last year. Yeah. You know, so what are the efforts being put in place right now to grow b gross premium, even bringing in microinsurance and TACAFO? That's right. Because I also know that microinsurance and TACAFO contribute less than 1% of, of, yes, of the That's premium. True. Yet, mm -hmm. we have a lot of people earning minimum wage or less than minimum wage yeah. that can also... Also, many MSMEs in Nigeria, mm. many privately owned businesses, yeah. uh, about 86% of employment contributed in Nigeria from by the SMEs. So with all this potential, because there seems to be so much potential, yeah, yeah the insurance yeah, industry yeah. is not doing that well. So how do you begin to grow gross premium around all these seeming challenges that we have? Turning 
a crisis into an opportunity. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, is, is, see, the potential of the market has been a major concern. But what we are doing since I came in is to stop this talk about potential and begin to talk about the reality. Uh, we have the capability to do much more than we are doing. I mean, the, if you look at the level of penetration now, it's abysmally low. Uh, we have no business being where we are. And all these efforts that I have been talking about in the last few minutes is with the aim of deepening the market, increase the premium. Then, of course, we need the cooperation of the operators. Uh, on due discounts, it's also a, a, a major problem. What do I mean by this? I can tell you today that the risk that we are taking right now as an industry is a risk of more than one trillion premium. But what so has where happened? Is the money coming from? Yes. The difference has been given out in discounts, mm. resulting from competition. The competition that is by price, not competition on the basis of what I have to offer. You know. So th th this, this is one of the areas, when I, when I was telling, talking about the challenges, this is one of the areas that the supply side have an issue. And we are dealing with that uh, as much as possible. We believe that uh, uh, by the end of this year, when certain things have been put in place, that's no longer going to happen. Um, because we, will have, we are setting uh, out the technology um, area, in technology area of the operation uh, of the commission has been seriously looked into and we have made great uh, advancement in those areas and we have issued guidelines also to the industry mm. uh, to improve their technology deployment uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, distribution and management of the portfolio. In fact, you, you just brought me out of my den <laughs> because that was the next question <laughs> around technology in the yeah. sense that how is the industry maximizing technological growth, right? And you see what yeah. is happening yeah. in the broader financial of course, space, of course. the fintechs yeah. and all of that. How are you as a regulator even evolving? Especially with COVID-19, yeah. uh, mm. we were uh, battling COVID-19, we we're still battling lesson. it. Yeah. We're still battling it. Then mm. NSAS, hashtag NSAS yeah. protest came yeah. in. So much talk around insurance industry and insurance companies. Yeah. So how are you putting all this together? How are you trying to melt all of this? Th there has been a lot of lessons from COVID-19. Uh, COVID uh, we realized at that point, and of course not peculiar to the insurance sector, uh, also the other sectors, that we can indeed transact our business without uh, physical contact. And uh, things have since changed and can never be the same again. Uh, with the insurance sector, just before the COVID uh, incepted, we issued out the, the uh, IT guideline, information technology guideline to the industry um, uh, with respect to how the operation uh, is to be guided. And uh, more so, leading by example, uh, our porter also, we immediately uh, have to uh, put that on. Uh, with that porter, we'll be able to deliver service to the industry uh, in a more prompt manner. Um, we believe that is going to enhance, for example, licensing, um, the issue of approvals and the rest of that need not be physical. It need not come, begin to run between uh, the office and the commission. It's something that can be dealt with. Above, ab uh, much more than that is the issue of uh, data, which is the module two of our portal, which we are just working on, uh, to make data available for informed decision by both investors and also the operators. All those we are doing in the, uh, with respect to techn uh, deploying technology uh, to, to, to do. Um, of course, uh, there's a lot around technology, FinTech, RegTech, SubTech, and all of that. Uh, you have technology all over the place, and we are trying to de deploy them as much as possible. If we take a look at the pandemic, what specific lessons do you think that the sector has learned? That's the A part of the question. The B part of the question also is, how do you think that the insurance companies will bounce back from the pandemic? Vis-a-vis -vis low capital, you talked about the issue of recapitalization earlier on, vis-a-vis -vis poorly motivated staff, because oh. perhaps some insurance staffs are not being paid Since well. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> how far have things changed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know for those perhaps studying actuarial sciences yeah. and yeah. all of that, they go into your sector. And yeah. I think you're a graduate of one too, yes. actuarial science. Sure. I have a cousin that studied actuarial science. Oh, good. You know, so, so <laughs> based on that, how do you see the industry bouncing back? And the lessons. I know you've been yeah. talking, you've been touching a bit about it. Yeah. But are there also specific lessons, pandemic yeah, the, lessons? The, the, that the, the, the lessons uh, is to expand our product lines mm. uh, to okay. take care of the unexpected and also to condition our operations in a manner that will uh, be less of physical contact. Uh, Virtual operations uh, is now taking over. So uh, these are pure lessons from, from that. And uh, for me, bouncing back um, in times, if you look at what happened in 2008 with the global uh, recession, uh, insurance is one of the sectors that was not directly too affected. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the effect on the insurance sector was through subsidiaries that are in other sectors. Um, we are risk managers, uh, therefore those things have been factored into uh, the operations of the insurance sector, largely. Uh, bouncing back, of course, from now, there are new businesses that have emanated as a result of uh, the pandemic. Uh, what hitherto had been made as uh, ancillary to a main policy can begin to now uh, almost stand as uh, on its own. Mm. You know, it, it, Business interruption, for example, uh, used to be an ancillary, uh, used to be a rider to an existing policy that probably was not charged for before. Uh, it's now business for the insurance sector. Um, they know that they now have to charge for business interruption because it's a risk, it constitutes mm, a risk yes, on yeah. its own. Um, then, of course, the issue of uh, uh, other classes, uh, cybercrime is Cyber coming. Cybercrime, yes, I was coming to that. Because co flowing from uh, virtual operations, this Conflict. technology, yes. this cyber crime, I mean, is there. So what covers can you provide uh, to also take care of that? It's one of the new areas that... Um, Which um, we've seen also people, increase in the last one year That's two. of course, yeah. of course. So the, for me, the insurance industry um, already having p packaging products that we deal with that. So, so those are some of the openings or some of the uh, things that uh, uh, probably emanated uh, from the pandemic. The pandemic led to the, the increased use of technology, mm -hmm. increased use of technology led, led to, to cyber crime. crime. Cyber crime you know, required that cover should be provided mm -hmm. to take care of the uh, 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 possible disruption. Highly motivated staff. You say yes. they are well, Of course, so I, 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 I will Let me go into the insurance. <laughs> Let me come and meet no, you. Yes, honestly, you are welcome. Uh, <laughs> things have changed from, you see, it's, it's, uh, I'm sure um, for those insurance companies that you know, um, if you ask them, it's not likely to be the same story anymore. Even uh, for insurance brokers and everywhere. Yeah, of course, of course. Insurance and that is why we are trying to encourage them to be bigger. Uh, when they are bigger, they will be able to increase the motivation of their staff. They will be able to, uh, uh, you know, the, the environment will be more conducive uh, to service uh, their, their client, client base. Mm. Okay, yeah. just as we end the yeah. program, any final thoughts? I think we've addressed yeah, almost most, most of the thing. I, and yeah. But I, I will just take this opportunity uh, to talk to uh, uh, Nigerians. Um, the rains are coming. Mm. How prepared are we? Of course, accompanying the rains, we have flood, we have storm. Is it not time for us to begin to prepare to ensure our farms. Because thank you for bracing that the insecurity. <laughs> so should we should farmers now begin to insure their farms because they also yeah. pay harvest allowance to the so-called bandits. Yeah. So I mean, shouldn't you protect we, against specific risk? The flood is coming. Your house, how protected? Apart from the compulsory covers that you, by law, you are mandated to my to the state governor, my respected governors. Can we now begin to look at how to quickly ask our commissioners of finance to make provision to prov so that it not, does not become an ad hoc expenses? You know, either you like it or not, one or two schools in your states are bound to have mm. uh, 
to fall victim of uh, this, the cost of replacement definitely will be more than the premium that you are likely to pay. So they should, s they should live by example. Yes, that's, that's, what I, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them, though, uh, or do I say a few of them, mm -hmm. a few of the governors have already made provision and are running well with the insurance. Uh, but um, we have much more. Uh, many are yet to, 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 to have that done. And mm. I think it is going to be for the benefit of the state and the citizens of the state. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, sir, for yeah. coming today. What a wonderful day to have you. One yeah. year in office and you're spending it with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I appreciate that. Thank you I so hope much, Nancy. We'll continue to chronicle even yeah, your, right. you know, your administration and see at the end of the day, what change you bring That's and what right. sort of leader right. you'll be for the sector. Thank you very yeah. much for Thank speaking you very with much, me. Nancy. All right, I've been speaking with uh, Olon Udaire Sunday Thomas, who is the Commissioner for Insurance, the Chief Executive Officer at NICOM National Insurance Commission, uh, one man that is so grounded in insurance. Over three decades plus yeah. of experience, he was a Deputy Commissioner Technical. Yeah. At the time. I think that was when I interviewed you. That's so, right. Yeah. DG also NIA. That's right. Then. So, yeah. so much. And I hope <laughs> that you've been able to take a lot of things from this interview. Let's not just leave our insurance to God. God is the super insurer. Let us also do our best. All right, that's the much we can take on today's edition of the program. Thank you all for being a part of the show, not just today, but this week. Uh, be the best you can be. Be the change that you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye now.